<laughs> Much research has been done on uh, millennials, many articles written, but this morning joining me is Japheth Kawanguzi, who is a talent manager at Umeme. Good morning, Japheth. Morning, uh, Brian. You're dressed like a millennial. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'd rather not comment on that. But <laughs> <laughs> What's this phenomenon about millennials? Why is it hard for people to take us seriously, first of all? Well, I'm, I'm happy you're saying us, meaning you're including yourself. Yes, I, I, I think I'm part of that. <laughs> uh, but, but I guess uh, to appreciate uh, the millennial challenge, you have to go back uh, to the beginning, mm -hmm. where it all uh, begins from the, the baby boomers born in the 60s yeah. uh, in, um, in a fairly settled environment. Uh, mm -hmm. Those guys who had uh, uh, tertiary institutions uh, and, and, and government probably paid for some of the, So they, they grew up in a settled uh, environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys who say, our days, uh, you know, our days, so our, our days, fathers yeah, yeah, be. our days. Mm -hmm. Now those guys uh, gave birth to the next generation, the one we're calling the Generation uh, X. Mm -hmm. uh, generation X uh, brought up fairly believing in hard work, uh, wanting better than their parents, believing they can do better than their parents, mm -hmm. and 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 not so amb uh, ambitious. Uh, the downside with them is they 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 look at situations and say, why me? Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, these guys, the Generation X, pampered the Generation Y that we're talking about now, mm -hmm. the millennials. Mm -hmm. uh, so many names have been touched, attached to them. They call them the Generation Me, mm -hmm. the Generation Y. They say, generation, actually, I call them Generation Why Not, mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's to them impossible is not a word that exists. Uh, they want to do it, uh, it's passionate, they are the, the, the generation that has been shaped by technology, yeah. you know, the internet generation. Mm -hmm. um, they are wired every time. You can almost imagine that, uh, that a phone is part of their body parts. You know, they are out at a date, but you know, they're on WhatsApp. They're they are walking, yeah. driving uh, on WhatsApp. So, so that's um, the, the generation now. And it's, it's becoming uh, more and more the next generation. Mainly because uh, if you look at Uganda right now, 75% um, of the population is under the age of 30. So they are millennials. If yeah. you are at the workplace and you think that you're going to do away with them, they're the next best thing coming out of the industry. So if you can't, you can't live with them, you can't uh, live without them, you have to find a way of you know, working with them. But basically, uh, it's it's uh, the, the next uh, generation that's that, and and I guess uh, for an employer, you have to uh, look at how can I get the best out of these because you you you, you can't do without it. Uh, if if employers understand that they cannot do without that generation, you know we keep we keep they keep graduating every year, mm, every, mm, year every year more than actually actually four hundred eighty thousand enter the labor market every year every year about employers know that it's, it's just a statistic you can't afford to ignore mm -hmm. yeah why is it hard for employers to even now for example you know that in january mccain mm. university will be well, bringing yeah, out yeah where are employers finding it hard to provide opportunities for these people and even keep them at the workplace because they know that we are creative we are engaging <laughs> we are fast forward thinking yeah we want things done you know and, and that seems to be good it's, it seems to be good, but um, there's a thin line between the engaging, the creative, the unsettledness, uh, the wanting to be connected. Uh, there's a thin line that you know, employers uh, struggle with because mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, statistics will tell you that 86% of, of millennials will tell you that they are driven by ambition. Mm -hmm. And that ambition could mean um, uh, could mean being your boss in three years, something he has spent 10 years, 15 years building. Uh, and, and so that it, sometimes it's, it's blind ambition. Uh. And, and they want to you know, achieve the glory, but they're not ready to, to do the work that is required for you to get the glory. So they want to stand at the prize, but when it comes to the hours, the pressure, the effort required for you to actually earn that glory, 
it's 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 uh, mm. it's, it's it, it, does, it doesn't uh, communicate well with them. So, and and uh, unfortunately, it's it's also blind confidence on their part sometimes mm -hmm. uh, because they they actually want it, and most of the time they don't care how it's it's going to to happen. They just they just want it, and you must put in place an environment uh, for you. Uh, to to uh, for them to have it. So, so currently, uh, uh, my employer who mm. has what fifteen years. Yeah. Let's say uh, I'll give an example of NTV. My employer who has experience of fifteen plus years in broadcasting cannot cannot understand that. You know, ca cannot. Well, do they feel disrespected? Uh, Is it a matter of disrespect? I'm trying to. to, to you know, this. it's 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 uh, probably. You have to look at how the employer, who is probably a Generation X, grew up. Yes. Believing in hard work. Yes. Believing in dedication. Mm -hmm. Believing in, 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 in giving your best. Right? Now, these kids who have been pampered uh, by the parent has, has uh, seen the parent work because they believe in hard work. Yes. And they don't want any part of that. To go through that So, so it's, that not, fire. it's not hard work. It's smart work. You know, how do we get smart about um, how uh, achieving what my parents spent the last 15 years building? How do I achieve it yeah. in a shorter time? Shorter time. Not mm -hmm. shorter time. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Today. Now. Actually, the, the mantra is uh, there is no uh, better time than now. You know, so now, so it, it's it's so when when the employer is actually focused on sustainability, building systems, because I, in what I do, we believe in having the right people in the right places, uh, doing the right things at the right time. Mm -hmm. So when I sit back, I look at our organization and say, do we have the right guys? So I look at uh, 1,400 and 100 critical positions, and I think, okay, we have the right people in these places. But now you're going to have a millennial uh, in one of those places who is not settled, who uh, statistics again will tell you that 45% of them um, think they're going to work for the employer for the next one or two years, casually. And, and it's something they don't care telling the employer. You know, I'm here for the next three years, two years, and then I go. I was actually uh, in, inducting 10 new engineers into the company and mm -hmm. I, I was encouraging them to, you know, you, you can't go to where you don't know. So just let's reflect on what you want to become mm -hmm. in the next 10 years right. and fresh from university. And they start talking. One says, um, I want to be the boss of these guys, you know, <laughs> in 10 years. The other one says, I want to, in three years, I want to be a consultant. In, what? Yeah, so that the dreams are big. Yes. Uh, big uh, and 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 the, the 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 technology hasn't helped because everywhere you go, uh, the, the thing is believe in your passion, dream. You can do it. If not you, then who? So, so it's it's a struggle. Whereas the employer is looking at building sustainable systems, having the right people, they'd be interested in having brand here for the next ten years, mm -hmm. doing what you are doing mm -hmm. but uh, for you you are looking at what's the next challenge where are the guys I studied with uh, what are they doing how can I be why can't I be like you why can't I be like them mm -hmm. get rich or die trying mm -hmm. you know so <laughs> so there's there's just a lot going on in that mind and 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 it's a struggle uh, for that employer to appreciate if you are a manager and you actually talk to one of them and you make the mistake mm -hmm. of asking what you want to be in three years you luck you'll be lucky if they didn't tell you that i want your job you know so <laughs> you know now that mm. you say it like i keep talking about this you know on the show i i had you know an appraisal in one of the places i was working with mm. and they always ask that question yeah, yeah where do you see yourself in five years yeah and i put my boss's <laughs> position and i never got an appraisal again <laughs> well now, now that makes sense yeah no 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 <laughs> well I, I can't speak for your situation. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can't speak for your situation. But like I said, you, you, being an employer now, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid that the, the next generation coming out of uh, the, the, the universities uh, are millennials. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge for you as an employer, a challenge for you as a leader. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you work with these guys to get the best out of them? How do you 
create an environment where they can actually contribute how they want or how they know best. Yeah. How do we do that? And I, I, I know, for example, one of mm. the things that millennials and employers struggle with yeah, is commitment. Yeah. Yeah. The guy can't just commit to, yeah. you know, to the company. Yeah. They, we, we find it hard to fit in the vision. Mm. Mm. The company wants to go this side and we always stop in the middle and like, I got a better opportunity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is too boring. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because uh, for an employer out there, I, I, I strongly believe that the success, your success as an employer, mm -hmm. uh, depends on how well you do it. Mm -hmm. If you fail to do it uh, well, then you, you, it's going to affect your ultimate results. But uh, perhaps uh, you, you need to create an environment for these guys to discover themselves. Um, uh, for example, what we do is uh, create enough rotational experiences for them to not get stuck in one place for, for, for long. Mm -hmm. Help, give them an opportunity to experience that, experience that, experience that, uh, such that by looking at all these experiences, they, they, they think and say, okay, I think this is what I'm actually meant to do. Right. And, and, and this is what I'm actually meant to grow in. So you'll find that an engineer is leaving engineering and going to a totally different department mm -hmm. because they think that's where they can uh, contribute more. You know? So, you know, create enough exposure for them to experience different uh, things to help them discover. Until they fit in, until the, the they, guy yeah, tells they you fit this is, this they is fit the in. thing. I'm yeah. And, 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 and as you do that, you know, you connect them to the big picture of the organization, what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Because um, you'll find that most companies want them to contribute how best they, the, uh, according to how the company wants. Yes. And yet, uh, technology is taking over uh, taking over the, the, the economy. And these are the guys who represent the new solutions in technology. They represent the new ways of approaching different uh, situations. So if, if you create a challenge, don't tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. Tell them what needs to be done. And they'll surprise you with their ingenuity. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Because that, that is crucial. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell them what to do. That you need to go right like this, do it like this, do it like this, do it like this, do it like this. No, it, it doesn't work for them because the next question is why and why. And you really have to explain a lot. <laughs> so, so the more you challenge and ap appeal to their creativity, because they, they, they have been brought up to think they're the best. Their parents yes. are always telling them, you're the best, there's no one better than you, you're my princess, you, you know? And, and, and so, so if you challenge that creativity in them, then they'll take it personally. And they'll own it. They'll own it and they'll, they'll come back better with something that, that um, will make you say, wow, you're actually as brilliant as, as, as you say you are. Wow. So you, it's, it's not uh, a, fight, a fight game uh, between them. You, you challenge their uh, creativity, uh, appeal to, to their sense of purpose. You'll be shocked that uh, further statistics say that 86% of them say they're driven by ambition. Mm. And about 84 say, they want to create a better world. Mm. Yeah, that's why they want try this, try that better world. So, how do you create a better world where we are right now? You know, because so so, the more you challenge, the more you encourage them to be the change. Uh, then, you you create an environment for them to uh, to, to to flourish and contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, uh, it's the simple things that matter to them. Uh, I work with one millennial, and if you say thank you, just say thank you. That's all. That's all. She'll work the whole night, as long as she brings the work and say, thank you, very good work. Good and, job. Uh, good job. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's the struggle of saying, uh, I mean, most employers will say, why is Brian like this? Why is, why, 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 why? And, and the challenge here is, before you ask why is Brian the problem, you probably need to look and say, am I the problem? Am I the one who needs respect? Am I the one who needs to be called boss? Am I the one who needs to be shown that I am the greatest ever? Am I? So it's, it's also that, that self-reflection as you create uh, that environment uh, for them because you, you, can't, you can't box them 
Yeah. You can't you can't really uh, box them in. Yeah. Jafet, th 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 there are some few comments here, and mm -hmm. and uh, we ask you know how should managers keep up with millennials? Again, by definition, if you're between 18 and 33, you are ripe for <laughs> you are <Yeah. laughs> actually called a millennial. And I hope you, especially employers, you're taking a lot from this. But of course, uh, you know, Jafet will provide also some solid advice for millennials too and how they can survive more. Someone here said, according to many hiring managers, a small number of millennials during an interview will use slang or overly <laughs> casual language. They will respond to mm. a text message. They'll pick up a phone call and I see that mm. we pick up mm. phone calls a lot. Mm. Like we will interrupt a conversation, just say, hello, yeah, what do you want? Or even have their parents or pets accompany them. Mm. Uh, it's, it's very interesting that you say that, uh, very interesting actually, because I remember I was talking to the same group and, and, um, and when they were expressing what they want to be, uh, one of them said, I want to have my own company, I want it to be legit. <laughs> 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 legit. Uh, and then you know, they came, a few of them came late and someone said, you go grab a cup of coffee. You know, and, and now this sticks. It sticks uh, even when they begin getting corporate and growing in their career. Yeah. Uh, uh, they send a text message and you think it's written in French. Yeah. Or, you know, or, I'm a millennial yeah. and I don't understand <laughs> some of the things they write. So I'm like, uh, can you write full sentences, please? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a constant struggle. Um, for Ugandans, we haven't reached the level of, of the pet in the interview room yes. because uh, I, I don't know how many people actually own pets, <laughs> but but it, it hasn't reached that level. But uh, I, I think you have put it rightly in uh, in especially the the technology, the the messaging, and, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you recommend for millennials? I believe with every right there's responsibility. Yes, we are ambitious. Yeah. We have big dreams that have to be gotten now. Uh, we don't commit. Wh wh what can we do to help our employers? Yeah. Um, like I said we, we went in, earlier in the discussion, a millennial's uh, focus is on me. Mm -hmm. It's on why not. Yes. And why not now? Yes. The best time is now. Uh, but th I, I guess the focus should also be that you cannot live um, independent of your environment mm -hmm. and of your employer. One of the biggest challenges uh, we find uh, when we're recruiting is, is people leave universities and they have no idea why they did the degree they did. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, 380,000 people unemployed throughout the year. So, so, and, and, and then you, you also find others who are doing something for the money and not, not, not because they love doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the millennial who will go to a job and will clash and clash and clash because they're trying to find themselves. They're trying yes. to find their place in the world. Yes. They're trying to find um, who inspires them. Uh, and, and, and on the other side, the boss is pushing back because he wants, he has tight deadlines. Mm -hmm. So if you are millennial, the, I think the most important thing for you to do is, is to spend time discovering who you are. Uh, discovering who you are, what you stand for, what brings you to life. Mm -hmm. If being a comedian brings you to life, there is no need for you to go and work for a company like Umeme. Hmm. If it's what Patrick Salvador did. Yes. Why, why, why am I here? Why am I here? Yes. Yeah. And, and he goes to MTN and laughs at the people he left there. Yes. He makes money off them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you don't naturally like talking to people, uh, do, don't, don't. Why are you in customer service? Why are you in customer <laughs> service? You know? So, yes. so discover what brings you to life. Uh, what is it that you can uniquely contribute? Uh, I, I picked that up from uh, from uh, the Alibaba uh, Jack Ma. He said, mm -hmm. between the age of twenty and thirty, uh, you have to follow someone, uh, follow someone who is doing something that you love doing, uh, someone who inspires you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you work for a big company, you get lost. Your identity gets lost with instructions. Yeah. But if you follow a small company and a small boss, you learn the values of working hard to achieve what you want. Yes. Right. So between the ages of 30 or 40, he says, uh, 
you should you, you, you should work for yourself work for for you now that's the, after learning the values of working hard mm -hmm. you you move on to to work for what you believe in and then you know and it goes on and on you can always find that but but you, you need to first of all find out you what you stand for and what brings you to life and then the hard part for most of them is you actually have to work for it you have to work you have to work for you have to put in the time it's uh, actually called sweat equity <laughs> <laughs> to to get exactly what you're looking for okay. well Jafet, very enlightening. I, I'm telling you, it's, it's, you are not even just speaking to, you know, not <laughs> the audience, the viewers that are watching us, but even me. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you struggle a lot that first as an employee yeah. Yeah. and then as an employer. And you start thinking, is, it the, is this the trouble that I'm causing yeah. my employer? Because yeah. now my employees yeah. are doing the same to yeah. me. So um, yeah. uh, very enlightening yeah. there. But someone once says, if you're a millennium, between 21 and 33, or let's stretch it down to 18, because now these days people have humongous dreams, and mm -hmm. they will, they, we can now dare to, you know, a child will tell you, I don't want to go to university. Right now in this day and age, I want to create this, I want to create mm -hmm. this. The advice is that embrace the fact that you're part, <coughs> excuse me, of an economic society of workers, not the center of it, and while your managers and peers may have years of learning and experience to share with you, life is a tour street where give and take and common courtesy, like a two weeks notice before departure, <laughs> that's common courtesy. I've, I've seen a guy who sent an email uh, in the morning. I'm not coming back to work. <laughs> Plans to stay for at least a year or two or three or even five to commit and grow steadily on the job. And I've always given myself, you know, as an example. Uh, many of you watched me here at NTV as I started my career. I've been here for seven years and you have seen me slowly progressing to the person that I am today. Some people still say, some people still find me on the street and say, Brian, hey, you used to dance on TV. Now you wear suits every day. <laughs> I think we need to go there. Mm -hmm. Let's work hard, especially work hard mm -hmm. for the things that we want to pursue, for the things that we dream in. And like Jeff has said, pursue that that brings the life out of you, that gives you, that, that makes you want to, you know, stay alive and you won't be disappointed. We'll upload this uh, on our YouTube channel in case you've missed it. That's NTV Uganda in a couple of minutes. Otherwise, Aisha is coming up with the latest in the world of sport and the progress of our netball team as they take on Jamaica at the Netball World Cup. Stay with us.